Hello again. Gaze into a mirror and what do you see? Well, I see my face, of course, but in my face I see moods, I see shifts of feeling. We humans are really good at reading faces and bodies because if I can look at you and feel what you're feeling, I can learn from you, connect to you, I can love you. Empathy is one of our finer traits, and when it happens, it happens so easily, perhaps because, and this is brand new science, this is just out of the lab, we may have some special circuitry in our brains that helps us whenever we look at each other. It had never been found on the cellular level before. A set of brain cells found on either side of the head. Among all the billions of long branching cells in our brain, these so-called mirror neurons have surprising power. What we found is the mechanism that underlies something which is absolutely fundamental to the way that we see other people in the world. Some people call them monkey see, monkey do neurons, but the name that stuck is mirror neurons because with them, the brain seems to mirror the movements it sees. This accidental discovery got scientists thinking, doing more tests, and it soon came pretty clear that this is not just a monkey thing. It's a people thing, too. We all know that humans learn by looking and copying. That's what infants do. First you look, then you do. And once you've watched and copied and learned a set of moves, you not only have them in your head. Look, you put your shoe on. If you see somebody else doing it, you can share the experience. And I want to do it with me. They know the moves, you know the moves, so you can move with them. Wow. So that's why when I head down this street carrying all of these packages, not only do people watch, look how they're watching. They feel my predicament, because they know what it's like to carry heavy packages. They all know about carrying. So as they watch me moving, they can feel themselves moving. Their neurons are mirroring the action. These neurons may be the brain's way of translating what we see so we can relate to the world. The mirror system is the way that you tap into, the way that you harness your own abilities and project them out into the world. And people are really good at watching and translating what we see. But there is more, suggests UCLA professor Marco Iacoboni. He thinks mirror neurons tie us not just to other people's actions, but to other people's feelings. So the idea was to try to figure out how the emotional system and this motor system are connected together. You're going to go in this camera, what you're going to do is to wear... To demonstrate, he put me into this very powerful fMRI brain scanner that can peer into the brain while it's working. Nice looking brain. Thank you. Robert, you're not supposed to talk when we scan you, all right? Sorry. Then he said, okay, I'm going to show you a bunch of faces. And for each face, I want you to imitate it. So I did that. Then he recorded my brain while I moved my facial muscles. We're gonna do right away another one. Okay. Then he said, okay, same faces, but this time, don't move a muscle, just look. This is your mirror right now. Jacoboni says that the part of my brain that's working when I make a face, the same part gets busy when I see the face. Plus, when I was looking at these faces, I remember feeling extra uncomfortable, kind of bad. But when these faces came on, I felt, I don't know, I felt better, almost happy. And in fact, at the moment I was looking at the happy face, my brain, and this is my brain, in that instant, see the red area here? It shows activity in the happy, emotional part of my brain. And when I was imitating happy faces, look, I get even a bigger response. This, says Jacoboni, is a consistent result. Mirror neurons, he believes, can send messages to the limbic or emotional system in our brains. So it's possible these neurons help us tune in to each other's feelings. That's empathy. 
you're saying that there's a place in my brain which, whose job it is to live in other people's minds, live in other people's bodies. That's right. But what we do know, says Ramachandran, is that healthy human beings are intensely social. More than our cousins the monkeys, we invent ways to connect. We invent dances and handshakes and games to play. We eat together, we meet, and we talk. We talk a lot. Get away, get away. Everybody's interested in this question. What makes humans unique? What makes us different from the great apes, for example? You can say humor, you are the laughing biped. <laughs> Language, certainly, okay? But another thing is culture. And a lot of culture comes from imitation, watching your teachers do something. And while no one's claiming that mirror neurons are the key ingredient that makes us different from other creatures, what these neurons do suggest about us seems almost self-evident. You can see it any Sunday at a sports bar, that deep in our architecture, down in our cells, we are built to be together. There would be very little point in having a mirror system if you lived on your own. There'd be a lot of point in having a digestive system if you lived on your own. There'd be a good point in having a movement system if you lived on your own. There'd be a good point in having a visual system if you lived on your own. But there'd be no point in having a mirror system. The mirror system is the most basic social brain system. It's a brain system which there's no point in having if you don't want to interact or relate to other people. <laughs>